Thank you so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We talk a little bit about fall. Paula is interviewing for jobs again. And we talk a little bit about sex and marriage and orgasms, plus two epic, ugly, and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Shop lippingclip.com to support the Uggs. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie? Send that hussy out of here. We can see her thighs. Paula? They don't know what I look like normally. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. It is episode... 315. Ugh. Ugh. Hey. Uh, we are awake. We are ready to rock and roll. And we are Sisters Who Podcast. Thank you for remembering because I had totally forgotten. <laughs> they say it takes 28 days to create a habit. Mm-hmm. So perhaps, you know, in 28 episodes, I'll actually completely remember that you're going to do it. I don't know. Okay. So it's fall in Northern California, just like that. Have you turned on your heater yet? No. You refuse? No, it's not that we refuse. It's just not that cold. First of all, I'm cold when it's 70 degrees outside. I am oh, not. Okay. I'm not good with the cold. I can deal with like 110, 112 degree days. No problem. I'm just one of those people who I don't. The heat does not bother me nearly as much as being cold does. I hate being cold. Like mom and I have that in common where she's like, Jamie, I've taken three hot showers in a day. If it's 30 degrees outside, like it's just too cold. Jeez. Those are the days that I wish that we had a spa Mm -hmm. so I could just be in it, you know, when I'm freezing and just submerge myself in boiling hot water. It would just feel so nice. But I think it has something to do with my low blood pressure because we actually have low blood pressure in the family. Yeah, I have it and too. I th- yeah, and I think that's why. I think I just get cold easy. But anyway, so it's fall. I turned on the heater one time for about a minute because it was 70 degrees in here. And I said, that <laughs> is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <laughs> so only a few degrees and I was fine. So then I turned it off. But also what happens because we live in an area near the river, the American River, There's a lot of wildlife around here and you have seen, and it's not just where I live, but all up and down the valley, there are these gangs of turkeys. Yes. Do you guys have them in Elk Grove? No, I mean, there's a park where there's a lot of ducks and geese, but... Okay, so, but you don't have the the four feet tall wild turkeys that run around together? No, no, we don't. Okay, we have them. And... They have never made their way into our subdivision, but they are in the public areas or the roads. So the other day, and so now they're out and about. And I almost feel like they do it in October specifically because they know their days are numbered somehow. (laughs) Because, yeah, there are fools in this area who will kill those and eat them. It's like World War II. They have to be out and about before the war starts. <laughs> yeah. They're getting their last refreshing days of freedom before they are yeah. killed. Before they have to live in the basement. <laughs> right. They're just getting all their fresh air. So anyway, Malia is, she takes her driver's test next week. I let her drive me everywhere. And uh, this happened to be a day where Daryl was out of town. And so we only had one car. So I had to drive. Obviously, I drove to get her and she drove us home. We were going down one of the side roads where it's fairly rural in the area that we live. And there are there. I call them thugs. The turkey thugs are all together. (laughs) Somehow they had landed on top of this uh, fifth wheel uh, trailer on this one neighbor's property on this road we were going down, there was a guy on a scooter going the opposite direction of this one-way road that we were on. So we were going to pass each other. Right before we passed each other, this gang of giant turkeys decided... Have you ever seen a turkey fly? No. I don't think I did. I've seen them cross the street, but I mean, that's pretty uneventful. I did. The neighbor who was pissed did something to scare these 12... 13 turkeys off of his property and they were on top of his fifth wheel and came down and flew across paula we both were sure that one was going to come through the window because we had our windows rolled down Mm -hmm. i have had a chicken land in my car (laughs) i know how terrifying it is to have a large creature freaking out in your car (laughs) so the wings 
the tips of the feathers of these wings brushed the top of our car. And it was multiple, like three or four of them. It was terrifying. And they're huge. You know, when you see like an eagle or a a vulture in the sky, you're like, oh, yeah, they're probably really big. And then somehow they land and you're like, Jesus Christ, they're like (laughs) four feet tall. These things are like, they're like as tall as Ryan. They mo- Olivia would look like a tiny person next to these things. They were so big. And I said, Malia, I just want you to know that, and she's experienced many weird things as she's been driving. I said, this is literally the weirdest shit I've ever seen God. teaching someone how to drive. You're going to be great. You're going to yeah, be Yeah, I was going to say, how did, how did she handle the situation? Well, she slowed down mm-hmm. because, you know, it, it, I assumed that if we hit one, it would be like hitting a deer or something. Right. It wouldn't just come out. It would be stuck or something. The dude on the scooter, he acted like he didn't see anything. He kept just on going. He just drove right by this this cloud of turkeys. He probably had headphones on and was just like, <laughs> not even like paying attention. I saw the sign when it opened. Oh, turkeys, I saw the sign. Yeah, totally he's, didn't see he's it. probably listening to Camila Cabela because that's the only <laughs> thing they play on the radio these days. <laughs> I hate her. She's literally the worst. God, I told Ryan today because I was doing a lot of driving today mm. and I'm like, I've heard the same five songs mm-hmm. every day. It was like Cardi B, Camila Cabela, uh, Youngblood and something else. And I'm like, it's just on on like a roll. That's all they play. Yeah. You got to get a player app like iHeartRadio. Yeah. Just get it because then you can listen. To, first of all, you can listen to any station in the country or you can create your own playlists and listen to whatever you want. It'd be all 80s or nothing. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you can listen to whatever you want. I mean, later in the show, I'll tell you about Daryl and I. We started listening to 90s (laughs) (laughs) R&B. It was awesome. It was so fun. Anyway, so yeah, fall is here. The turkey thugs have returned, and pretty soon they'll they'll go back into hiding until, like, spring. That's when they seem to show up again. So Mm -hmm. we'll see. But yeah, I'm cold. (laughs) I'm freezing. And I feel like, of course, I don't know about you. I have nothing to wear. Everything's ratty. No, you know, I I issue this complaint twice a year where I have nothing to wear when it's hot. And then suddenly I have nothing to wear when it's freezing. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't seem to get my crap together when it comes to wardrobe. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so you are on the hunt for employment. Yes, outside of this illustrious job as podcaster. <laughs> yes, it does. It doesn't quite pay the bills. It so. doesn't. <laughs> so I am job hunting, and I have been for a little bit of time. I did get a call from a temp agency, mm. and they asked me to come in and talk about basically a recruiter position, but mm. it was a like a three month contract. Okay, and I'm like, well, I could probably do that. Yeah. And, you know, you know get back out there and see you know what's what's going on and so I met with the recruiter or the staffing manager basically Mm -hmm. and she told me about the position and all that stuff so she asked me if I want to meet with the company or you know she says she'll send my resume over and see if the company wants to meet with me okay and so that was today and so I've had to find two outfits to wear to these interviews just in case or for sure yeah right and so going through my closet and olivia's helping me pick out clothes and and as (laughs) children can be brutal i was just gonna say you told me the other day what did she say (laughs) i wore one dress and i'm like this one looks good and she's like mom she's like you look pregnant (laughs) and then you told victor and she's like well she's mean yeah, and she's like, I didn't want to say anything because I thought it would be mean. I'm like, it yes, is mean, it Stephanie is. Jr. Probably shouldn't have said anything. I'm like, well, we'll just take this one off and burn it. <laughs> we'll just so. we'll just throw it away. We'll just kick it with rocks. Which sucks because when I wore that dress, I, I got a lot of compliments on that one. You probably but. didn't look pregnant. What is she so obsessed with pregnancy anyway? I don't know. How does she, she even know? She always tells me she wants another baby or she wants me to have another baby. She does not know what she's talking about. She has no idea what she's saying. Yeah, she thinks that's that it would be fun. You're right. She doesn't know. She has no idea how how sick you are. 
Oh, can right. you even imagine? It's like, okay, let's just let's just entertain the princess of the family. We're having another baby because Olivia says so. Just let's all be prepared for my hospitalization, <laughs> my an inability to take any kind of medication. So I'll be insane. And then uh, you guys will just have to live like savages because <laughs> I will be out of commission for nine months. But hey. Olivia thinks it'll be fun. So, but in the end, it'll <laughs> we'll have all the work nugget. Out. We'll I'm, have the baby. Yes, and then we'll be figuring out what to do with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going through my closet and I'm looking at my clothes and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, this is cute. And so then I go and look at the tag and I'm like, size six, what the fuck? I'm like, where did this come (laughs) from? And I'm like, I can't believe I actually was that size once upon a time. Mm. So I was able to settle on a couple of uh, mediums. And you, you you know, separates, separates are very, very forgiving. They are. I don't have too many. I guess I was just a... A one garment person. Well, it's so. easier just to throw a rag on when you need to go to work. I mean, I think that's what it was. And do you know what? <laughs> do you how? Okay, so this is terrible, and I don't know why I did this, but at both interviews, I didn't wear makeup. <laughs> Paula Marie. <laughs> okay, did you get a call back? Yes, but I'll explain <gasps> to you. Okay. I guess. Why I didn't you think- wear makeup? You just couldn't get it together? No, I just felt like, you know, (laughs) everything else looks fine. They don't know what I look like normally. Okay, listen. uh, You can continue explaining your ridiculously pathetic excuse. However, Paula, (laughs) we come from a family where we, at the very least, lip and clip ourselves. I I mean, did you at least have base on foundation? I had nothing. I am so disappointed in you right now (laughs) go on this is my rationale is they don't know me Mm -hmm. so they don't know what I look like so I may just be a makeup less person (laughs) all the time Mm. so if I am running late and I don't have makeup on and I go to work it's no big deal that's why you did it that's what they think I look like okay and by the way, the lady that interviewed me, she wasn't wearing any makeup either. Oh, well, so. that excuses it. Sure. Let's all just be uggos when we go out into the world. Makeup by all is means. thing that takes the longest well, okay. in getting ready. I, I completely agree. And I'm not asking you to look like a Kardashian when you walk out the door. But you know what? You might be a candidate for the extensions, the permanent lashes. That would be a good thing for you because then all you need to do is put on a little concealer under your eyes, throw on some lip gloss, and you're good. Because, you know, you, blush is not necessary for everyone, even though we all, you and I look sickly without it. But it's true. I'm just saying that, you know, you could pinch your cheeks like the old days if you need some color. I guess I just wasn't feeling it. I don't know why. It only goes against everything we've been raised to do because that's just the way it is. I understand, sadly, the irrationale. Right. I would not endorse this. And I'm only trying to be gentle because I understand what you're doing. And, you know, you haven't had to pull it together in three years because of, you know, just the light. Life changed. And for three years, you were raising your children. I totally get it. I wake up and especially since you've been on the hunt for employment outside of the house, I wake up like at 630 and think, you know, I would have to get myself together in an hour if I needed to go to work. Mm -hmm. And I would have to get up even earlier than that because I have a child in school. So, I mean, I do understand. I definitely get it. Right. And plus, it also deters any kind of office, romance, anything, (laughs) because you're putting up a wall. I don't want to find myself in that situation. Well, not on a not on a contract job. No. Not on any job. I know, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's... I hear you. No no good comes from it. Not really. No. Well, I mean, I married somebody I worked with, but... You got lucky. Very. I agree. It's a one in a million shot. (laughs) It normally does not work out that way. Okay, so you didn't go with makeup. You went through the process. You found some kind of rag to throw on your bod. And you looked put together, I assume. Of course. Yes. I didn't look like, you know, a maniac or anything you didn't, like that. You didn't wear a man's shirt with no bra and uh, 
yoga no. pants. Okay, good. No, I wore my little platform high heels. Oh, you probably looked cute. My little dress. My hair was, you know, brushed nicely. And uh, unfortunately, we were at a hairspray, so oh god, I could only do so much. <laughs> okay, well, how did it go? I mean. Okay, so I come into her office and I sit down. The first thing she says to me is she's like, well, based on your resume, it doesn't appear you have much recruiting experience. (laughs) Then why the hell are you there? And I just kind of like looked at her and I'm thinking, are you joking me? I'm like, I've recruited at every single job. Of course you have. Do you have to put it specifically in skills? Yes. But she said, well, you haven't had large mass hiring experience and I said well uh you know I guess this depends on how you look at it you know what is large mass hiring for some that could be like 15 people right you know for others it could be 200 yeah or it, I guess in this case it's a thousand and so how many people do you think have done thousands of recruitment I think that she had already made her decision Ah. Uh. It was just the cat playing with the mouse before eating it. Got it. And so that's kind of what annoyed me was yeah. like, I was like, you saw my resume yesterday. You agreed to meet with me. Right. Yet when I come in, you insult me. And we're both HR professionals here. So what? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, why are you wasting our time? both of our time yes i mean i tried to sell myself the best of course but i mean i didn't really go too far to Mm. you know i wasn't on like my hands and knees begging god no because i was just like i it 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 just wouldn't be a fit anyway well and not only that but i mean if this is your person i mean god and so (laughs) when i got home i sent an email to the staffing agency Mm. and then she called me like right away as soon as I sent the email and she's like yeah actually we got the feedback right after your at your interview so she had called them as soon as I left and said no yes (laughs) did they give her did they say anything specifically to you that was offensive uh they just said um I didn't have any mass hiring experience then why yeah okay I don't I don't even understand why she even agreed to meet with you. That's what I'm thinking. Unless she just did not look at my resume she didn't. at all. Unless until five minutes before I got there. And then she's like, oh, shit. You know, why yeah. am I meeting with this girl? You know, bullet dodged is the way I look at it. Right. I'm thinking. That is the great thing about staffing agencies. I got fired from uh a, a an age a job once and not, not the staff the staffing agency loved me i i made mm-hmm. top dollar there because i took anything because initially i took anything because i love the flexibility and it was more than minimum wage this was forever ago and it was just like i don't understand why people don't do this my biggest mistake was not registering with multiple staffing agencies i only mm-hmm. registered with one but they had me they put me in so many gigs it was ridiculous and so they sent me to a law firm. Mm-hmm. It was fine. Uh, somebody was on maternity leave, so it was going to be potentially two to three months thing. And it was just like the receptionist. It was it was nothing. Mm-hmm. So I went in, and they had a very archaic, multi lined switchboard type play thing. And it oh, took God. it took me forever to figure it out. And no one was helpful. And Mm -hmm. here's the thing I didn't realize. Nobody told me there was a dress code. So this was the era of Melrose Place. And so I was wearing, I had a blazer on, but I had a very short skirt for a law firm on. Oh. I even wore nylons because I'm like, well, it's a law firm. I should probably not be too California about it. And, you know, I mean, I've worked at a million places. So, I mean, I, I just kind of assumed. So they said, all right, well, you go ahead and go to lunch. The temp agency called me and they said, hey, they don't want you to come back. And I said, what do you mean? Like for the, after today, they're like, at all. <laughs> and I was like, what? And she said, yeah, they said that you were dressed highly inappropriately and they were offended by what you were wearing and they couldn't wait to get you out of there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? They're like, can you come by and show us? I'm like, yes. So I came by and they're like, "Uh, I don't understand. (laughs) They're like, what? They're like, well, this is not your fault. 
first of all, if they wanted somebody who wore a skirt below the knee, they should have said so. But it was in a very old school law firm. Like, right. everything was brown and mahogany and it wasn't fancy. Except even like all the attorneys were in offices, surra- like in a horseshoe. And then yeah. the, the pit was all the assistants and stuff. So it wasn't like it was a super quiet, fancy law firm, but it must have been. <laughs> so God. and all the women there were like 45, 50. And I was 22, maybe, <laughs> you know, it was just not it was not a fit. But they they just said, send, send a warm body over. And they're like, no, not this one. And so, send the whore home. Yeah, send that <laughs> hussy out of here. We can see her thighs. So, God, it must have been a boring job. Well, it was boring, but it was a lot of money. And oh. so I was really disappointed. But I was also like, you know, fuck those assholes. I was like, fine, yeah. you know, whatever, grandpa, bye. But if they had just said, this is the dress code we expect, I had those clothes. But I just you know, yeah. I hated them, but I had them. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you'll find you'll find another. She just seemed a little too excited to be a bitch, insult me, and then call the agency and said that they are not interested. She probably does this all the time. It's a power thing yeah, for her. Probably. Yeah, I, I think know. she likes the power. I hate that yeah, I hate that too. So. It's kind of like that same power that customers think they have at restaurants. You know, oh, like, like our sister. Yes. <laughs> I, I expect this to not be on my bill because it was not prepared accordingly. I sent it back so no one's getting a tip. Oh, God. I swear. That's my, fa- that's my favorite thing to tell Allison. I'm like, you haven't left a tip since 1998. <laughs> so true. Cheap. That's the word that comes to mind. Cheap, cheap. Yeah. It's like, would someone please escort her to the restroom, please? We don't want a lawsuit on our hands. God. Yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah. Call ahead. Does your restaurant, is it carpeted? Like, is there any way anyone could possibly fall? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, just anything is better. I mean, it, honestly, please. I'm begging you. Okay, so this was really hilarious. I think I've talked about this briefly in the past, but, you know, we have one more child at home. And she's mm-hmm. probably, um, she and her friends have this plan to Wait, hold it. on a second. Mm. Really, Olivia? All right. <sighs> Apparent Ryan, apparently Ryan's in the other bathroom, and Olivia can't wait, so she has to use mine. <sighs> Children. <laughs> you know what? This is perfect. This is exactly, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, we have one more child at home, and mm-hmm. uh, Daryl and I can literally see the glitter of heaven down the hall so close to being kid free for the most part i mean we can practically see it and so she has a plan with her friends that they're going to move out and go to college together and they're going to live in an apartment they're all going to work i don't know when this is happening but there's a plan and so i said all right now you and i both know that anyone who moves out before they're truly ready, ends up at home again at some point. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I'm I'm cool with it. But I was like, wow, that'll be great. So Daryl, I, I was telling Daryl, I said, yeah, a couple of months ago when all these parents were taking their kids to college and they're alone now, there's all these different reactions. There's the, we're alone. We don't even know each other anymore. We kind of just live our own lives. The only thing it seems we had in common were the kids. <laughs> And now it's obvious stuff like that. And so Ooh, that's sad. Well, it's very common. No, I mean, I, I, I agree. Yeah. But it's just sad that, you know, every uh, <laughs> every senior year, everyone's coming to these realizations. Yes. The empty nest realizations like, oh, shit, I'm only I'm only with you now. So and then the other one I was reading, uh, this guy goes, yeah, we just dropped our daughter off in college came back oh he he this had happened like a year and a year ago he goes yeah we dropped our daughter off at college we came back we had sex constantly for a month everywhere <laughs> he's like we loved it and now that's we're great. traveling and i'm like oh that's gonna be us <laughs> that'll be that's us. great i thought so too i said you see that's the way it should be you you never forget what you're looking forward to when you're done raising the humans you get to go back 
to what made you want to get married in the first place, the really good sex or whatever. So we're getting tastes of it. Malia has a very busy social life. And so there, mm-hmm. there's a lot of time where we have all this time to ourselves, And so we decide, hey, let's go to let's go to Napa and have dinner and we'll come back. And so we went to Napa, had a great dinner, came home and then started listening to 90s R&B. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what that leads. To. I mean, right. it, it's for everybody. I played Usher. We had, you know, New Edition, Force MDs. I mean, John B, that was the... Oh, man. I mean, that was <laughs> over after that. God. Over. I wore out that CD. Me I, too. I love John B. Wow. Ugh, he's so good. So then our lives are so busy that some, especially with Daryl traveling and stuff, sometimes we just kind of sexually, we get off track because, you know, mm-hmm. we're just fairly regular. And so if it's been more than a few days, you know, you can tell. And so he's like, I've been wanting to wake you up like every day this week. And I said, all right, tell you what I said, we were going to, and then everything got off track because, you know, Malia had practice and it was just, it didn't work out. And I said, okay, tell you what, we'll, we'll go to bed early. And he's, and I said, and, and we'll just, I said, I won't do any of my bedroom rituals or anything. Cause I, you know, I have a whole f- process before I go to bed right. and he goes, you mean pre teeth brushing and everything? <laughs> and I said, stop it. That sounds <laughs> like we're old. <laughs> I'm like, you mean I'm not gonna you mean you're not gonna even take your meds or your vitamins or anything before we go to before we have sex? This is crazy. This is insane. I'm like, stop it. That's crazy insane. Wow. I'm like, no, I, well, I think he was well, first of all, I thought he was I really was hoping he was being like sarcastic. sarcastic. <laughs> but I wasn't sure because there was a light in his eye and I said, Okay, listen, we aren't even we're not fifty. We're not even fifty. Okay, so Stop acting like an old man. <laughs> Stop it. It's God, yeah, really. Because he, what he's saying is making you feel old. <laughs> That's what I said. I go, what are we, geriatrics? Stop. Jesus, it's been two days. It's not like, you know, it's been a month. Fuck. You know, talk to talk to some of your buddies about how many times they get laid in a month. I bet yeah, you would really? be shocked. For real. So anyway. That's 20 years of marriage, though. There you go. I guess. My... Although, I mean, I don't know. I I don't ask a lot of people, and I don't know a lot of people that have been married for 20 years. Well, that's probably true. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been with Victor for, like, 14. That's true. You're close. And uh, on average, we used to be, like, three times a week, I guess. That's good. But, that's healthy. But, like, now, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it was just within the last couple of years we like flip flopped because he's just, you know, content with whenever he feels like it. Right. And I'm like, I would could do it every night. Well, they do say that women hit their sexual peak in their their late 30s. So that's not surprising. I have noticed, even though I'm not in my late 30s, I have noticed that my libido is much higher than his, which is crazy because he's insanely horny and not Victor. I meant Daryl. Right. And so it's like, it's weird to be angry <laughs> that I didn't get laid, especially with my partner, because it would be, you know, he's always like, look, I'm sorry, I'm tired. I'm like, you know, is it me? Is it me? Do I need to work out? Is that what he's like? Oh, my God. I'm like, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out and I'll be butthurt for like a day. Do you know what I've done? Mm. I've masturbated while he's sleeping. <laughs> I've done that. I've done it. I hope he just wakes up, but he doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I have done that. I have. It's, it feels spiteful, which probably (laughs) makes it feel feel. better. (laughs) It makes me feel better. But yeah, it's true. Oh my God. That's so funny. I was reading an article about the first time people had an orgasm in like their whole life. And um, like they were young, like 12, 11, you know, they didn't realize, you know, whatever they go. And then I felt this like the one this one girl, she's like, we were running in like middle school. She goes, we were running. And then I started feeling this weird sensation between my legs as I was running. So I started running faster. <laughs> and she had an orgasm running. And she's like, I didn't want to scream in, in, in ecstasy because I was with all of my classmates in PE. But it was like, it felt so good. She goes, now it happens all the time. And she's like 20. I'm like that's weird. I'd act like God. She must be fit because I would be <laughs> if that happens. 
Running, really? Yeah, I thought that was interesting. And then I'm trying to catalog and remember the first, the very first time I had an orgasm, and I honestly cannot remember. I remember. Mine or yours? Mine. Tell me. No, well, you don't have to. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, like 20, I think. Okay, okay. You and Daryl and the kids were out of town. And you asked us to come check on, like, your dogs or something like that. Okay. And so we had sex on your couch. Ew! (laughs) And I had an orgasm. Was it the poo couch? It was, like, a white couch. Oh, it was the poo couch. Okay, good. We got rid of it. It's fine. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That is crazy. (laughs) That was the first time you ever had an orgasm? Yes. That is interesting. Well, I can tell you, I remember the first orgasm I had via a person, another person. I can't remember the first time I had one with myself. Maybe I actually had a hard time having orgasms when I started having sex. Like it took me forever. I think it took me like six months or something. Well, it was the guy I lost my virginity to, which we'll talk about next time because we're running out of time. Okay. I have it noted for sure we're going to talk about virginity, but I it was the guy I lost my virginity to. We dated for like two years after that, and we were at the drive-in, and he used his hand on me at the drive-in. Ooh. It was, it was hot. It, I mean, it was mm-hmm. sexy, and so I did, but it took forever, and I just remember I was so preoccupied with his hand getting tired. That I, it took me a long time to, to just relax and enjoy myself. But I think Mm -hmm. that was, and, but I did. And I can't remember the movie. I wish I could actually. God, I, it was, I don't even know. It would probably be something ridiculous like Back to the Future. (laughs) Maybe that's why I hate the movie. And I remember it felt so weird. It was so weird, but it felt amazing, obviously. But I, it had so much guilt attached to it. It was weird. It took me, it took me a really long time to truly enjoy orgasms and having sex and stuff like but just forever but now it's fine but before it took a long time i i was resentful of these girls who are like oh yeah i was 12 i had a washcloth and i'm like really that works for you i'm jealous well that's different like get making yourself have one that's Mm -hmm. different yeah that's true i meant by like having sex no i hear you oh yeah. yeah it it took me a long time too for sure. Yeah. Once I started. I mean, I, I enjoyed sex, but I, but the actual orgasm part, it took a very long time for me as well. No doubt. Most of the time, I feel a lot of pressure, which no one's pressuring me, <laughs> yeah. but I'm pressuring myself. Yeah, I do that too. I'm, I'm so preoccupied with the length of time. Is someone getting bored? You know, and it's just, I, I can't. I can't let go of any of that. And so, mm-hmm. it, you know, and I still get, I, that still happens. Not as often, but it does happen where I'm like, I'm sorry, this just isn't going to happen for me. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I agree. Anyway. Okay. So speaking of awkward moments, we should go into our ugly and awkward moments of the week. <laughs> Okay, so, like I said, this whole job interview process, um, Mm -hmm. I've been very thankful for it, but it's just kind of not been fun. No. And I I should have realized the signs that things weren't going to go well when I first went to the temp agency. (laughs) For a while, I made like four U-turns because I couldn't find the building. Oh, jeez. And so I was 10 minutes late. (gasps) And that, you know, of course, isn't good. No. My mouth was like cotton mouth because (laughs) my pills make me have a really dry mouth. And then you add nerves on top of that. And like my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And so I have that special like dry mouth. Mouthwash. Mouthwash. (laughs) Anyways, once I finally got there, I get out of the car and my it feels weird and I'm like what the heck and so I'm trying to hurry because you know I'm late and I'm walking and it just it my foot feels like it's on like something spinny like like it's spinning okay and so I look down and I had platforms on my shoes and so I look down and the platform is hanging (gasps) off the shoe 
by like some foam thing and i'm just like i broke my platform oh my god so it's flapping (laughs) it's flapping oh my god i have to pray that i can get through this whole process without losing a a shoe basically (laughs) well luckily they probably didn't look down Hopefully not. Hopefully just, nobody followed me, and they're just like, "Oh God, she really needs this job. Her <laughs> shoes are maybe broken. that's why they're just throwing you at any, they're throwing you any bone <laughs> they can find. They're like, please get this girl a job so she can buy a pair of shoes that are God. actually put together. And hopefully, hopefully she's not pregnant. Because, oh my you know, God, she's just <laughs> you know, shoes betray me at all turns. It really, really do. So I, I feel you so badly. I did something horrible today after I picked up the kids and we went to Wendy's. I usually don't order anything because I just don't eat any of that stuff. Yeah. But they had something on the menu called chili cheese potato. Ooh, that sounds (laughs) deliciously bad and sinful. So I ordered one and a Dr. Pepper. And And did you gorge? Yes, I gorged it and then I shouted out the potato and I'm just like, you're nothing but calories and fat and sugar and (laughs) preservatives. I'm like, you have no nutritional value. And then it went back, it looked at you and said, enjoy your diarrhea. (laughs) Oh, I know. It's going to (laughs) happen. And I have a Snickers bar in the refrigerator. Wow. I'm so angry because I hit my milestone, my weight milestone for one day. And then now I'm like up two pounds. And I'm just like, what the hell? So Paula, it's time to I, hit the laxatives. I totally get it. I have my doctor's appointment. My annual appointment is in two weeks. It's on Halloween day, ironically. <laughs> why do you do it? Why do you make these appointments on holidays? Daryl made the appointment. <laughs> that is that is the only thing I can say to you is Daryl made the appointment. I'm like, awesome. So let's go ahead and do that. Two days before I'm going to indulge in sin in Vegas. Right. right. That'll be awesome. Was it your mammogram on like Columbus Day or something? <laughs> it was in January. It's it was literally like it was on my mom. It was on her mother's birthday last year. <laughs> That's what it was. God, yes. And she and of course she was just like, why didn't you tell me? I would have come with you. I'm like, oh yeah, right. That would have been amazing. No. Jeez. Please. I told her I had to get a follow up on that mammogram. She's like, Jamie Lynn, you know, that's how it happened with with my sister. Since they said it was nothing, and I'm like, okay, stop. Stop right. with the theatrics. Okay, I already know what the possible outcome could be. Jesus Christ. And so I am ordering one of those sweatsuits that, that you like basically insulate your <laughs> body. Like those blue ones? Yes. I ordered one and I'm going to wear it when I work out for the next two weeks. Because I, listen, there's no way I'm going to lose the amount of weight that my doctor wants me to lose because it's impossible. (laughs) I would have to get lipo, but I'm doing my, and you know what sucks? He's just like Dr. Marshall. He's thin and athletic, you know? I know. So, which he's a doctor. He's supposed to be, but I'm just saying it's, it's very difficult every time. He's like, so what are you eating? (laughs) Like, God damn it. Not sugar, okay? (laughs) Just, he's like, you know, sugar is sugar, fruit is sugar. I'm like, I hear you, brother, and I'm not eating fruit. Trust me. That's the part I don't get. If they asked me what I was eating, I'd be like, nothing. (laughs) Absolutely nothing. I can eat nothing. My gullet says no. Look, I always go in less than I was the year before, but it's just never enough. What does he want you to weigh? I think he wants me to look like Flat Stanley. (laughs) that's that's the only thing i've concluded oh my god honestly i don't think there there he will never go well you're perfect i think it's more of because once you hit 40 losing weight is very difficult women's metabolisms just plummet and so if you gain weight it's almost impossible to lose and so i think that's the, the goal is just to always be mindful and to remember, but I exercise every day and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't eat shit. You know, of course, occasionally I do, but like a normal person, but I'm not, I, I don't know. Anyway, aside from all of that, I hope you uh, find another pair of shoes that does not flap when yeah, you walk. I have another pair, but I was looking at my closet and my shoes and I'm like, everything needs a refresh. Yeah. I mean... Some of them look like church clothes. Cart, you know, cart before the horse. It sucks because it's like you, you, you're going to work because you need a paycheck and yet you need stuff to look. These, 
Paula, I have so many clothes that you can borrow. Like, okay. I mean, they're going to be bigger on you, but you can pin mm-hmm. them and stuff. I mean, it's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll I'll pull out an array and you can you can totally look at whatever. All right. My awkward moment. And then we'll yes. wrap it up. We had a big family dinner last weekend and it was super fun. Everybody, mm-hmm. uh, producer Dub's whole family came. You know, Daryl's daughter from Virginia was here. She, we had an amazing visit. So before. Sorry, I missed it, but you you knew yeah. I wasn't well, coming. You saw her the day before. It was fine. Right. Yeah, it was not like you, you know, you, you got to visit with her and your kids and everything. So the day before, or the week that on that Friday, the, the dinner was on Sunday on that Friday, I decided, you know what, I should fall the place up. I should get a pretty wreath. I should get some new pillows. You know, we got a new chair, so I should get a little throw for it. Mm-hmm. Just kind of warm the place up just a teeny bit. I love uh, seasonal decorating. I do too, but I don't like to go over. Well, Daryl loves to go overboard for the Christmas holiday, but yeah, Christmas is nice. Yes, but I actually like the fall decor. I think it's pretty, and so mm-hmm. I was just finding a few things. So I was in the parking lot, Pier One Imports, mm. and I was sitting in the car having a furiously long, not angrily, but just a long chat with like three people, like three different, you know, Mackenzie and and Daryl was in LA and, you know, it was just all these things. And so I'm in the car. So I don't have prescription sunglasses because I just don't need them to drive. And so there's really no need for them. So I have my sunglasses on because it's in the daytime. I have my sunglasses on. And so what I do, I have this really bad habit of putting my reader glasses over my sunglasses. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that I can see if I'm not prepared to take off my sunglasses yet. See, I used to put my glasses on and then put my sunglasses over them. I tried to do that, but it squishes my face and it hurts really bad. So I don't do that anymore. I just put them right over my sunglasses. Now, I have those big, huge Dior bug sunglasses. Right. They're, I love them and because they, they cover everything, but... You can't put glasses underneath. So I'm sitting there. I'm doing all these things. So I'm like, oh, shit, I got to get going. You know, Malia's getting out of school. So I blow out of the car and I'm walking swiftly to Pier 1. And there's a very tall, lanky gentleman. Now, I have made it a practice for years not to look guys in the eye. I never do. I haven't in forever. Like the guy that was flirting with me at the DMV, I couldn't even tell you what he looked like. I just don't look at guys. But he's standing in the way of the door and he's really tall and he's not moving and I'm walking right towards him so finally I look up and I look at him he's got this very strange confused look on his face and his head is tilted he's just looking at me weird I'm like what's the problem and I go oh my god when I looked up to look at him everything was blurry (laughs) and I was like oh shit and so I took him off and then he walked away (laughs) that is so weird like oh my god and then when I turned around to thank him he was gone he was gone (laughs) No, and I'm like, I must have looked like that that teacher in Harry Potter, <laughs> the one that's just, <laughs> I probably look like a moron. <laughs> so, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> that is so funny. I'm going to be the funniest old lady ever. <laughs> God. Seriously. I'm so terrified that if I get married again. Mm-hmm. I'll be married for like, you know, 10 or 15 years or something. And then my husband's going to like divorce me for a 20 year old. Don't you worry about that? Oh, yeah. I talk to Daryl about it all the time. Yeah. God. Because did you see that um, when we were watching the UFC? Did you see that that pan they did of that little young thing with the two older gentlemen at the UFC fight? Maybe. I don't remember. Well, we were watching it, and it was before the big fight, and she was all discoed out. She was a cute 20, probably 24-year-old woman holding her cocktail, surrounded by two men that could have been her grandfather. Ugh. And they were clearly very wealthy, but also just lech. And I'm like, she's either being paid to be there or she's someone's assistant in L.A. or something. You know what I mean? It just looked like that. And yeah. so I'm like, oh, my God. And so I told Daryl, I said, hey, listen, when you're not if you decide to trade in the new model for, you know, for a newer, younger model, just remember that you have daughters that are that age, literally. Right. And that always prevents him from thinking about it. At least in front of me. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm not saying that he doesn't. I'm just saying that for him, I know his type and it's not young and nubile. I mean, I know it's sexy to see maybe in porn or whatever, but in real life, he would not gravitate towards that. It's like, I always go, oh, God, she's so pretty. He goes, she's got no ass. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And so I said, yeah, I don't know if I could. He said, could you date anyone younger, younger than you? I'm like, never. 
No. I know you could, and we even said that. I'm like, Paula could, but I don't think I could date a man younger than me. It would be weird. It would be just be so weird. I go, would you date a woman older than you? He's like, um, <laughs> I don't know. And I said, well, I couldn't. Well, Victor could sleep with anything. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have a type. He doesn't have a type. <laughs> He's like, available. Yeah. That's his type. <laughs> Vagina. That's his type. That's nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I think you win this week. Thank- so. Oh, okay. Thanks. That was really funny. If you haven't heard, we are famous. Um, mm-hmm. Awkward moment. Oh, not awkward moment of the week. <laughs> awkward family photos. Awkward family photos. We submitted a picture probably about two years ago mm-hmm. of us four uglies. And lo and behold, we are appearing in their 2019 daily calendar. Yes. We are Miss October 7th. 7th. Yes. If you'd like to see it. You have to buy it. Yes. So visit Amazon. And I think, Jamie, you put a direct link to there is it. A, there's a direct link on our Facebook page, but there's also a direct link on our website, uglytruth.com, right on the front. Go ahead and pitch in and take a look, and it will be exciting and fun. Yeah, and they're then, 10 bucks. They're nothing. Yeah. They're 10 bucks. And the, the other pictures are hilarious, too. Of course they are. So. I mean, well, we're huge fans of ugly... Uh, Al- why do we keep saying that? It's awkward. It's because family photos. it's the awkward word. That's <laughs> yes. what throws me. Yeah. So for sure. And so, then yeah. uh, be sure to visit lipandclip.com and also Amazon, like we just mentioned. Yes. Sorry, I thought there was another one. That's it. Other than that, have a happy day and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.